no one wants to see animals get hurt. I mean, like, we could just say a few things and people that have their heads screwed on could work it out for themselves. They claim to care about animals. Let me show you what's happening to animals. Is that good or bad? They have feelings, emotions, personalities, families and a desire to live and avoid pain. Primitive attitudes towards animals must end. We now know better. We must evolve into higher thinking. Nobody can convince me that animals are not sentient. The definition of sentient is simply the ability to perceive and feel things. The history of how we perceive animals is quite interesting. As our scientific knowledge has increased, our understanding of animals has increased and also the way we view them has evolved. The 17th century French philosopher René Descartes believed that animals were soulless machines that didn't feel pain. In fact, he just believed they acted as if they did. To test his theory, he nailed his wife's dog to a board and chopped it open. While the poor dog was still alive. He was totally unfazed by the appearance of pain. The dog died in unimaginable agony. We still have a long way to go in the way we view and the way we treat animals. There is no fundamental difference between a man and animals in their ability to feel pleasure and pain, happiness and misery. Charles Darwin. Farm animals feel pleasure and sadness, excitement and resentment, depression, fear and pain. They are far more aware and intelligent than we ever imagined. They are individuals in their own right. Jane Goodall. Do animals really express emotions or are they just making it all up? Animals have brains too. Some have bigger brains than humans. What are they doing with these brains? Can they think? Can they feel? Are they also having mental experiences just like we are? Animals are aware of what's going on. Elephants know the difference between the voice of hunters and the voice of tourists. They recognize their family members, even if they have not seen them for many years. Your dog has the thought, I want my belly rubbed and rolls over. Humans pretend that they don't know that animals have individual personalities and express individual emotions. They pretend that they're not aware of this. Humans not only experience grief, they create grief. Sentient beings are animals that can feel, perceive, and show awareness or responsiveness through senses that enable them to smell, communicate, touch, see, or hear. At the Francis Crick Memorial Conference held in Cambridge, England, a prominent international group of scientists presented evidence in which they concluded that the weight of evidence clearly indicated that non-human animals are conscious beings. We all came to this consensus that in fact, now was perhaps the time to make a, a statement for the public, for, for people like Barney, who are, are not uh, neuroscientists, uh, but who in fact uh, have an interest in this topic because as our tools are evolving very quickly, some of the conclusions we have are changing, and some of the assumptions we have made uh, are being discarded. Um, and it might be obvious to everybody in this room that animals have consciousness. It's not obvious to the rest of the world. Um, it's not obvious to, you know, the, the rest of the Western world. It's not uh, obvious to, you know, uh, people in, in the Far East and other places. It's not obvious to everybody. Uh, you know, you have been a very, very sophisticated audience. Um, and this has been an amazing lineup of speakers. Uh, not everybody has this kind of, you know, um, processing uh, and, and, and access to such data. Farmed animals are individuals with distinct personalities and emotions, just like cats and dogs. They feel affection. They form deep friendships. They long to be safe and happy. They want to be free from fear in both physical and emotional pain. Like us, they desire to go on living. Dogs become visibly distressed when separated from their owners. Octopuses even remember human faces. Cows and other animals display signs of extreme distress when their newborns are taken from them. There was an instance in India where a grieving cow spent days, uh, or maybe even longer than that, in the exact spot where her calf was killed. 
the same driver who was responsible for the hit and run accident still drives that bus, that very same bus. The cow remembers the driver and chases his bus every day. She doesn't harm the driver or the passengers, nor does she even try to stop him. She does not disturb any other vehicles. The driver has tried multiple tricks to get rid of the animal and he's even repainted uh, the bus completely. But the cow continues to track him down. Now this grieving cow would initially just butt the vehicle but then she would just walk slowly ahead of the bus. And once the driver crossed that particular path, the exact spot where her calf was killed, she goes back to her original spot. People even chase her and threaten her with sticks, but she remains undeterred. She remembers what happened to her calf. Uh, and so with that being said, I'd like to begin reading, reading this joint statement, which all of us have agreed on. So on this day of July 7, 2012, a prominent international group of cognitive neuroscientists, neuropharmacologists, neurophysiologists, neuroanatomists, and computational neuroscientists gathered here at the University of Cambridge to reassess the neurobiological substrates of conscious experience and related behaviors in human and non-human animals. While comparative research on this topic is naturally hampered by the inability of non-human animals and often humans to clearly and readily communicate about their internal states, the following observations can be stated unequivocally. First observation, the field of consciousness research is rapidly evolving. Abundant new techniques and strategies for human and non-human animal research have been developed. Consequently, more data is becoming readily available and this calls for a periodic reevaluation of previous held preconceptions in this field. In fact, subcortical neural networks aroused during affective states in humans are also critically important for generating emotional behaviors in animals. Artificial arousal of the same brain regions generates corresponding behavior and feeling states in both humans and non-human animals. Wherever in the brain one evokes instinctual emotional behaviors in non-human animals, many of the ensuing behaviors are consistent with experienced feeling states, including those internal states that are rewarding and punishing. Furthermore, neural circuits supporting behavioral, electrophysiological states of attentiveness, sleep, and decision-making appear to have arisen in evolution as early as the invertebrate radiation being evident in insects and cephalopod mollusks, e.g. octopus. Third observation. Birds appear to offer in their behavior, neurophysiology, and neuroanatomy a striking case of parallel evolution of consciousness. Evidence of near-human-like levels of consciousness has been most dramatically observed in African gray parrots. Moreover, certain species of birds have been found to exhibit neural sleep patterns similar to those of mammals, including REM sleep, as well as was demonstrated in zebra finches. Neurophysiological patterns previously thought to require a mammalian neocortex. Magpies, magpies in particular have, shown, have been shown to exhibit striking similarities to humans, great apes, dolphins, and elephants in studies of mirror self-recognition. Convergent evidence indicates that non-human animals have the neuroanatomical, neurochemical, and neurophysiological substrate of consciousness, of conscious states along with the capacity to exhibit intentional behaviors. Consequently, the weight of evidence indicates that humans are not unique in, poss in processing the neurological substrate that generate consciousness. Non-human animals, including all mammals and birds, and many other creatures, including octopuses, also possess these neuro neurological substrates. John Webster, a professor of husbandry at Bristol University, stated, People have assumed that intelligence is linked to the ability to suffer and that because animals have smaller brains, they suffer less than humans. That is a pathetic piece of logic. Sentient animals have the capacity to experience pleasure and are motivated to seek it just like humans. So when in pain or distress, an animal resists pain. It flinches, uh, it takes shallow and deep breaths, it emits distress calls, including wailing, whining, and they even cry. You, 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 you ever go to uh, a slaughterhouse when they're delivering animals early in the morning, it's always done early in the morning, 
and peek through the little gap and you see the animals there, you will see those cows, you will see those pigs with tears coming, it'll, it'll be wet here, tears will be coming, they know what's happening, okay? They know when, they, when um, they leave somewhere, they're not coming back because they've seen uh, that happen to other animals, okay? They cry and many activists who video these, you actually see cows crying, tears coming down their eyes. They express extreme sorrow and sadness. They know what's happening. The question is not, can they reason, nor can they talk, but can they suffer? Jeremy Bentham. An animal's eyes have the power to speak a great language. Martin Boop. Cows scream louder than carrots. Alan Watts. Animals have brains, a central nervous system, and can feel pain. Non-human animals express their pain and grief, even if they can't speak human languages. Their actions speak louder than words. The pain humans inflict on them is so severe it can hardly be described in words. The field of cognitive ethology, the study of animal minds, shows how fascinating and sensitive they truly are. Animals, including fish, have similar pain receptors and sensors to humans and react the same as humans to pain. When in pain or distress, they resist pain, flinch, take shallow and deep breaths, and emit distress calls including wailing and whining, and they cry, just as humans do. Perhaps animals even experience worse pain and distress than humans. When an animal is injured, it has no understanding where the pain is originating from and how long it will last. Humans, on the other hand, understand what's happening and that they can seek medical assistance. Perhaps animals experience even worse pain and distress than humans because when they are injured, they don't know what's happening. They don't know there's any, any help available. They, they have no idea what's going on. And Perhaps they're suffering more emotionally than humans because we know we can dial 999, we can call a doctor, we can take medication. But animal has no idea what's happening and what to do. They're just feeling ex extreme pain and suffering and they've got no answer. So perhaps their suffering is worse than us. They're gone, they're dead. That's the reality of where the uh, meat comes from, just like this. So millions of lobsters and crabs are thrown into hot boiling water. In fact, in this country as well, pigs are uh, thrown into boiling water, supposedly after they've died, but sometimes they, after they've been stunned, they're still alive and they're thrown into the boiling water to remove all the uh, hair from their skin. And sometimes they're in there and they're still alive because the machinery doesn't work and it happens every single day in this country. The standard way of killing pigs in this country is to gas them. Does that sound familiar? So pigs are uh, very sensitive social creatures and they can express empathy. And it is said that a pig is as intelligent as a dog. You can train a pig to do tricks. You can train a cow to do tricks. Okay? They're very inten intelligent creatures. Um, they can respond to their name. Now, some crabs are electrocuted, chopped up, microwave, all while, while they're still conscious because we think just because they can't talk. I mean, how ridiculous is that? We think just because they can't talk. Okay? but we can see visibly them expressing pain. Millions of lobsters and crabs are thrown into pots of scalding hot water and boiled alive. Amen. The crabs will fight so hard against a clearly Amen. painful death that their claws often break Amen. off in their struggle to escape. All well, they are still conscious. Why are you running away? Boiling water, now. What a myth, they don't scream at all. I thought it was cooler to dispatch them. Yeah, we still feel guilty though. Wait a little bit. Straight down. Straight through the brain, that is.
Lacking empathy is at times a result of a psychological defect. How should we respond to their cry for help? We don't like to think that uh, fish uh, have pain receptors, but fish do have pain receptors just in their mouth. They have many pain receptors. I think a dozen or two dozen pain receptors. They feel extreme pain where we hook them and take them out. Oh, okay, just because they can't express it, they can't talk, we think, okay, maybe they're not feeling pe pain, but they do have pain receptors. The argument about, the debate about whether fish uh, can feel pain um, is long finished. It's over. It's over. Fishing is nothing more than a cruel blood sport. When fish are impaled on an angler's hook and yanked out of the water, it's not a game to them. They are scared, in pain, and fighting for their lives. Researchers in Scotland located 58 receptors in the face and head of rainbow trout. 22 of those were pain receptors in a fish's mouth and head, where an angler's barbed hook would penetrate a fish's flesh. In her book, Do Fish Feel Pain?, biologist Victoria Braithwaite says that there is as much evidence that fish feel pain and suffer as there is for birds and mammals. When Braithwaite and her colleagues exposed fish to irritating chemicals, the animals behaved as any of us might. When rainbow trout had painful acetic acid or bee venom injected into their sensitive lips, they stopped eating, rocked back and forth on the tank floor, and rubbed their lips against the tank's walls. Fish who were injected with a harmless saline solution didn't display this abnormal behavior. Fish don't audibly scream when they're impaled on hooks or grimace when the hooks are ripped from their mouths, but their behavior offers strong evidence of their suffering. Some screams are silent. Numerous studies by neurobiologists have long recognized that fish have nervous systems that comprehend and react to pain. Fish like higher vertebrates have neurotransmitters such as endorphins that relieve suffering. The obvious reason their nervous system produces painkillers is to alleviate pain. A study in the journal Applied Animal Behavior Science found that fish who were exposed to painful heat later show signs of fear and weariness, illustrating that fish both experience pain and can remember it. A study by scientists at Queen's University Belfast proved that fish learn to avoid pain, just like other animals. This paper shows that pain avoidance in fish doesn't seem to be a reflex response, rather one that is learned, remembered, and is changed according to different circumstances. Therefore, if fish can perceive pain, then angling cannot continue to be considered a non-cruel sport. Researchers at the University of Guelph in Canada concluded that fish feel fear when they are chased and that their behavior is more than simply a reflex. The head of the study stated, fish are frightened and they prefer not being frightened. Fish are able to detect and respond to noxious stimuli, and FAWC supports the increasing scientific consensus that they experience pain. Dr. Colin Brown of Macquarie University, who reviewed nearly 200 research papers on fish cognitive abilities and sensory perceptions, believes that the stress that fish experience when they're pulled from the water into an environment in which they cannot breathe may even exceed that of a human drowning. Unlike drowning in humans, where we die in about four to five minutes because we can't extract in oxygen from water, fish can go on for much longer, 
It's a prolonged slow death most of the time. It would be impossible for fish to survive as the cognitively and behaviorally complex animals they are without a capacity to feel pain, and the potential amount of cruelty that we humans inflict on fish is mind-boggling. It would be an unjustified error to assume that fish do not receive pain in these situations, merely because their response did not match those traditionally seen in mammals subjugated to chronic pain. According to a study by the UK fish welfare organization fishcount.org, about 970 to 2,700 billion fish are caught from the wild annually. The debate is over. Fish feel pain. Well, it's very interesting. I went to the wet markets, okay, and I've seen fish in captivity in small buckets suffocating, uh, slowly suffering, and it made me very distressed. The things I saw in there were horrific, and I can't believe I could see them, but not many other people could actually see these fish in these little tanks suffocating, suffocating, and their silent screams. If you look in their eyes, they're, they're traumatized, they are suffering. It's senseless suffering. I've also seen uh, fish cut in half lengthways and their bodies exposed and their hearts were still beating. Donald Broom, professor of animal welfare at Cambridge University, states that animals become excited when they're giving intellectual challenges to solve. In one study, researchers challenged the animals with a task where they had to find how to open a door to get some food. An electronic instrument was used to measure their brain waves. And what they found was these animals were excited once they were able to solve these challenges. Professor Broom states, their brain waves showed their excitement, their heartbeat went up and some even jumped up in the air. We called it their Eureka moment. In what Scientific American called a new frontier in animal intelligence, researchers are finding evidence that some animals are more intelligent than humans give them credit. Pigs are relatively sensitive, social creatures that can express empathy and are said to be as intelligent as dogs. They can be trained to respond to their name. Contrary to common opinion, pigs are relatively clean animals. When given sufficient space, they do not soil their sleep area. They roll in mud to cool down since they cannot sweat. Chickens are smart, social, sensitive animals. Scientific discoveries about chicken brain and behavior are remarkable and explode the bird brain stereotype, confirming that they are far more cognitively sophisticated than previously believed. A January 2013 feature story in the Scientific American called The Startling Intelligence of the Common Chicken opens by explaining that the chicken can be deceptive and cunning, that it possesses communication skills on par with those of some primates, and that it uses sophisticated signals to convey its intentions. When making decisions, the chicken takes into account its own prior experience and knowledge surrounding the situation. It can solve complex problems and empathizes with individuals that are in danger. Turkeys are social, playful birds who are intelligent and have distinct personalities just like dogs and cats. They have been known to have over 20 distinct types of vocalizations. They are curious, inquisitive animals, good at geography, and exhibit problem-solving skills. They suffer tremendously during Thanksgiving and Christmas season. Obviously, non-human animals don't have the knowledge and intelligence levels humans do, but that should result in us behaving more intelligently towards them. If, as some emphasize that humans are on the top of the food chain and more intelligent than non-human animals, should we then not behave more intelligently? Animal exploitation is unintelligent, primitive behavior. This savage, barbaric behavior belongs in the distant past. Notice carefully how his gaze changes. Did you see? Dread, fear. The heavy breathing you see indicates one thing. He knows where he's going. Many people believe they don't have emotions, but they're actually social, complex creatures. They're 
excellent memory enables them to recognize up to 100 different faces. And in spite of all their emotions, at this moment there are 22 billion chickens locked up. Let us tell you some facts you didn't know about them. Chickens dream. They communicate vocally with their chicks. They need privacy, just like us. They like playing, and they feel sadness when a flock member dies. Are you surprised? Of course you are. That's because we only ever meet chickens like this. Stripped of their feathers. Stripped of their fears. Stripped of their dreams. Stripped of their personality. Stripped of their memories. Stripped of their complexity. Stripped of life. A day after a family saved this beached octopus, it returned and gave them an astonishing thank you. When a family on vacation spotted a beached octopus, they stepped up to help it. After returning it to see where it belonged, they thought their good deed for the day was over. Yet, when they returned to the same beach the next day, the octopus was back and its reaction to the family's return was astonishing. In 2014, YouTube user Helena was holidaying with her family in Soma Bay near the Red Sea. On the day of the rescue, they were spending time on a quiet, empty beach. Suddenly, they spotted the octopus stranded on sand, struggling to survive. The octopus was losing moisture and close to death, so they jumped into action to save his life. The caring family pushed the poor creature back to the sea, hoping the water would revive it. For some time, they were unsure whether their efforts had helped. They wondered with bated breath whether the octopus would live. Then finally, after the animal had recovered from its ordeal, it swam away into deeper water. With the octopus disappearing, the family believed they'd never see it again. The next day, the holiday makers decided to return to the same beach for a stroll along the sand. As they walked down the shore, they noticed a shadow slowly approaching them along the water's edge. To begin with, they did not know what it was, but as it got closer, they realized it was an octopus. In fact, oddly enough, it was the same octopus that they had saved just a day earlier. And if they were surprised to see it again, they were even more surprised that the creature appeared to recognize them too. Not only that, but the squishy little fellow then followed them as they continued along the seashore. Continuing to follow the family, the octopus stayed with them for about an hour. The group, shocked by this behavior, captured the moment on camera and later, Helena shared the video to YouTube. The most amazing thing the video showed was not only the way the octopus followed them, but also the interaction it attempted with the family. The octopus repeatedly attempted to express its gratitude to them in the only way it knew how, by trying to touch their feet with its outstretched tentacles. After such an extraordinary experience with the octopus, the family stated, we were sure that this octopus just came back to say thank you for saving his life. It's amazing how intelligent animals are. And it seems not only did their gesture of goodwill save the octopus's life, but it also created a unique connection between people and sea creature. It turns out the family even named it, Kurt, after becoming so attached to it. What's more, for Kurt, it's an octopus's friend's sake the family have also made a promise to themselves. In their video they stated, we will never eat octopus again. Although this strange behavior from Kurt the octopus may seem out of the ordinary, this case is not the first in which an octopus has seemingly thanked its rescuer. Indeed, in 2013, YouTube user Pai Yan Heng uploaded her similarly weird and wonderful rescue experience to the video sharing site. Heng was visiting the Cyrene Reef, Singapore when, like Helena and her family, she noticed an octopus. It, like Kurt, was dying as it lay stranded on the beach. Believing it had gotten stuck on the sand when the tide went back out, Heng realized it would need help getting back to where the water's edge now was. Scooping the creature up in a clear plastic cup, Heng then carried the octopus to the shallow waves. Gently placing the container in the water, she waited patiently for the creature to find the courage to return to sea. Heng slightly tipped the creature's temporary plastic home and finally it slid out. Once returned safety to its ocean home, the octopus took some time to recover. Eventually, the animal was revived and ready to swim away. But not, of course, before thanking its rescuer. And, like Kurt and its saviors, this octopus used its tentacles to show its gratitude. The animal swam towards Heng's left boot before resting one sucker-covered arm upon her foot for a while. After some time, in which Heng stood still and allowed the creature to touch her, it swam away. 
leaving the woman knowing the octopus appreciated her kindness. So the question now is whether these occurrences in which octopuses appear to thank their helpers are just a coincidence, or are these invertebrates more intelligent than many people believe? Many researchers in this field have explored the intelligence of octopuses. Naturalist and writer Cy Montgomery attempts to bring this research together in her article for Orion magazine entitled Deep Intellect. The article follows her visit to the New England Aquarium where she meets Athena, a Pacific octopus. Montgomery explains that she would always wanted to encounter an octopus and was finally given her chance. Senior aquarist Scott Dowd invited her to a private introduction. Here the lid of Athena's tank was lifted and, if the octopus was obliging, Montgomery would be able to touch her. When this moment came, both octopus and person reached for one another. As in the case of Helena and Hang, the octopus used its tentacles to explore the visitor. Montgomery explains, although an octopus can taste with all of its skin, in the suckers both taste and touch are exquisitely developed. She then added, Athena was tasting me and feeling me at once, knowing my skin and possibly the blood and bone beneath in a way I could never fathom. Peter Godfrey Smith has some interesting theories regarding octopuses and their extraordinary use of tentacles. A diver and professor of philosophy at the Graduate Center of the City University of New York, Godfrey Smith, like Montgomery, has an obsession with octopuses. The professor explains, it's as if each arm has a mind of its own. And of course, science is proving the truth in this idea. In fact, Montgomery explains, three-fifths of an octopus's neurons are not in the brain, they're in its arms. Not only this, but Researchers who cut off an octopus's arm, which the octopus can regrow, discovered not only does the arm crawl away on its own, but if the arm meets a food item, it seizes it and tries to pass it on to where the mouth would be if the arm were still connected to its body. If the amazing abilities of their arms don't convince you of an octopus's intelligence, then there's further research to explore. Co-author of Octopus, the Ocean's Intelligence Invertebrate, Roland Anderson has yet more evidence of their brain power. Not only did he report that the creature had learned to open childproof caps, but they also displayed playful behavior. By using a bottle as a ball, the octopus was bouncing it back and forth across the tank. And as Anderson explains, only intelligent animals play, animals like crows and chimps, dogs and humans. So is this intelligence that sparked the octopus on the beach to thank their rescuers? Godfrey Smith believes so, stating, they come forward to look at you, they reach out to you with their arms. Anderson's co-author, Jennifer Mather concurs, adding, I think consciousness come in different flavors. Some may have consciousness in a way we might not be able to imagine. Keith Kendrick, professor of neurobiology at the Barbraham Institute in Cambridge, has found that sheep are far more complex than we realize and can remember 50 faces that sheep faces, even in profiles. They can even recognize another sheep even after a year apart. Professor Kendrick has also described how sheep can form strong affections for particular humans, becoming depressed by long separations and greeting them enthusiastically even after three years. In the field of psychology, cognitive dissonance is the mental discomfort experienced by a person who simultaneously holds two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values. Most people identify as animal lovers and they would agree that it should be a criminal offense to uh, treat animals with cruelty. Yet, they happily accept the exploitation of animals in the meat and dairy industry. Many self-professed animal lovers financially support the cruel slaughter of billions of animals. I used to do that. Now you can't love animals and eat them. Animal lovers should not support animal cruelty. Are you an animal lover or an animal consumer? Do you love animals enough not to eat them? Dog lovers don't eat dogs. Animal lovers don't eat animals. Seriously, why do people lavish extreme uh, expressions of acceptance towards dogs, but then they eat pigs and wear cows? It's bizarre that people happily consume pork or chicken, but not dogs. Try introducing dog meat into some countries, there'll be an uproar. 
If you torture a single chicken and are caught, you're likely to be arrested. If you scald thousands of chickens alive, you're an industrialist who will be lauded for your acumen. Nicholas Kristof, New York Times columnist. It's a contradiction in animal mistreatment. Species regarded as more intelligent and emotionally complex, dogs, dolphins, cats, primates, receive more public concern and legal protection. Yet pigs are among the most intelligent, social, and emotionally complicated creatures, capable of great joy, play, love, connection, suffering, and pain. On a par with dogs, yet they receive almost no protection, and are subject to savage, systematic abuse in the meat industry. This is cognitive dissonance. We are rationally taught which meat is edible and which is disgusting, shuddering at the thought of eating a dog steak, but salivate at the thought of a medium rare beef steak. The only difference between a pig and a dog is your attitude. People love pets, not animals. If someone kicks a dog, people protest. Yet, they find it acceptable when farm animals have their throats slit unnecessarily. People happily eat cows, but they don't eat dogs or rats. You can't be against animal cruelty while you're paying for it to happen. Paying for someone else to commit the crime does not make you less guilty. If you want to eat any animal product, an animal has to die. You may not be pulling the trigger yourself, but don't fool yourself. You're responsible for their death. Yes, I killed animals, too many to count. But do I have more blood in my hands than any non-vegan? I would say no, supply and demand. As long as people continue to eat animals, someone will have to kill them. Governments are in bed with the meat and dairy industry and they're profiting from tax revenue. They are slow to change inadequate laws to avoid political embarrassment and the current laws are really half-heartedly enforced. Legalized corruption dominates this industry. We need to turn the world vegan really fast. Human views on animals really need to evolve fast. The line between humans and non-human animals is at an irrational place. We like to view ourselves as on the right side of this line. Everyone is right in their own eyes. Sadistic, psychopathic behavior includes a lack of empathy and remorse. When we ignore our conscience, we become desensitized. Our moral compass becomes warped. Herd mentality then dominates, and we follow the crowd instead of what's right. Our ability to reason becomes clouded. The way human psychology works is that you could be kind and nice to a human being or another person and yet still in another area of your life do the most hideous acts or even tolerate the most hideous acts. Lack of empathy for animals may be a psychological disorder that causes a kind of disconnect in the mind. Causes may include brain damage or psychological block through being desensitized. Now the meat and dairy industry seeks to desensitize society. The masses are brainwashed to consume meat and dairy as if it's essential and it's acceptable. Perhaps you have been desensitized. That sleeping empathy can be awakened in you. Empathetic sensitivity is desensitized through societal conditioning or industry marketing. It is cunningly used in the animal use industry to trick you into purchasing products and services by hiding what really goes on. I mean, think about it. Would you take your children to a slaughterhouse? Think, would schools take children on day trips to slaughterhouses? No, they wouldn't because there's something to hide. Pigs are painfully shocked with electric prongs. Nonviolence leads to the highest ethics, which is the goal of all evolution. Until we stop harming all other living beings, we are still savages. Is a vegan lifestyle morally superior? I have to confess I'm not a vegan. I have to confess that I think it is morally superior. If you had the choice, which one would you choose? Kill humans, kill animals, or kill neither? 
Most people will choose C because we know that makes sense. So what we must do is align our values with our actions. It's not enough just to say you're an animal lover and then eat animals unnecessarily. In an episode of Good Morning, Pierce Morgan argues with a 12 year old trophy hunting uh, girl, young girl and her father. The exchange highlights the hypocrisy of those who view trophy hunting and killing pets as humane. Yet those same people will justify the murder of farmed animals for meat. Animal abuse is insanity. That's why there are laws against it. Protecting animals is the right thing to do. We often choose the easiest option instead of the right choice. Ideal moral ethics is not determined by history, religion, personal choice, or the majority. Neither of these is justification for cruel behavior. You can't just say that's the way we've always done it. It's my choice. Most people do it. And then you think that justifies it. We must align our actions with our values. What is that process like for the calf, for the mum, for the farmer? That affects you, affects you now talking about it. going to be something we're going to be very ashamed of when we look back in history. Very ashamed of. The human race should be very ashamed of themselves. Thank you for watching and subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell for notifications for new videos. Make sure to like the video and leave a comment. Doing this helps us spread the message. Like and follow me on Facebook and be sure to support us on Patreon. Why not get a free gift at www.explorewithjamespeter.com Let's make the world more vegan.